We are back with another episode of Can You Afford This House? Today, we are gonna be looking at homes in Kansas City, Missouri. We're gonna pick a random house on Zillow. We're gonna break down the numbers and see, can you truly afford this house and how much income do you really need to be able to qualify to move forward with this purchase? If this is the first time you're checking out my channel, my name is Sean Uihara. I'm a branch manager with Loan Depot, helping you finance your homes all across America. Whether you're buying your first house or looking to build your real estate portfolio, we got you covered and I'm here to help you get your mortgage right. So make sure to hit the description below for more information. If you're looking for a second opinion or ready to get your pre-approval, you can simply email me to get started. And don't forget, if you find these videos helpful, share them with your friends and family. Hit the subscribe button as we drop content every single week. Now let's hop into Kansas City, Missouri and take a look at some property there. All right, let's look at something very average of what we'd probably look at. So we have a three bedroom. Let's say two bath we are going to look at only single family homes in the kansas city missouri area look at this property you can get something for as cheap as one hundred eighty-four thousand dollars. that is insane here in las vegas i think our median price right now is about four hundred and fifty thousand. wherever you're watching from comment below tell me what your median price is i would love to hear about values in your neck of the woods and you know what? Maybe our next episode, we'll do a video in your specific part of the country. Alrighty, let's take a look at this house. Wow, this house is four bedroom, three bath, $239,000. All right, let's run through these numbers. It's a four bedroom, three bath, been on the market a couple of days. Fantastic opportunity in Green Hills. I'm not familiar with the Kansas City area, but uh, let's run through the rest of the video. Large corner lot, 17,000 square feet. This is awesome. This house, I bet is going to sell fairly quickly if it already hasn't sold. Looks like it's been recently renovated. Looks like a really nice property. So again, four bedroom, three bath, built in 1964, two car garage. And let's take a look at our pricing history here. This is one thing I always love looking at. And I know sometimes for you first time home buyers, you're going to look at this. It's going to drive you crazy. This is the beauty and the power of real estate. You could see that this home was listed for sale back in 2014 for $149,000. Shout out to that guy or gal who bought that home and now they're selling it for almost $100,000 more than what they initially paid for. That is the beauty of owning real estate guys. So if this is your first time looking to buy a home, this is one of the reasons why I love owning property because of the upside that you can see. And of course, to make that type of money in this type of market, it's awesome. You can go buy another house or use it to invest and make some more money. Our property taxes, they assessed it last year at 27.55. I would imagine that has also gone up since we're in the new year and home prices continue to go up. So now let's hop into the numbers on this specific home. Now, if we look at the 239.950 sales price, the traditional way that most people will buy homes, they're looking at putting 20% down. If we're looking at the 20% down option, there is no mortgage insurance, our property taxes. Last check on last year, it was 27.55. So we know that they probably went up this year. You can see even in the estimate, we have 260 a month. Homeowner's insurance of $84 a month, no HOA fee, which is great. And you can see your monthly principal interest taxes and insurance payment is gonna be about $1,400 a month. Again, this is with your 20% down option, assuming a 5.3 or so interest rate on that. Let's just bump that up a little higher because rates have gone up. So let's just say if you're at 5.75%, takes you to 1464. So not that big of a difference. Now, what we would look at in this scenario, if we're gonna work the numbers backwards. So we have our PITI at 1464 a month. Now remember PITI stands for principal interest property taxes and your insurance. Those are the four biggest factors that make up your payment other than the HOA. But on this property, there is no HOA. So now as we work the numbers backwards, again, when we pull someone's credit report, we're gonna be looking at all the debt that shows up on there. Now we're looking at your credit cards, your car loans, installment loans. If you have payday loans, we're gonna look at that stuff. Anything that shows up on the credit report gets accounted for student loans, car payments, your utility bills, however, do not get counted into your debt to income ratio or your DTI. Now, one big misconception that a lot of clients will always think about is the total balance 
on their credit cards that's owed. When we calculate your DTI, all we are looking at is the minimum payment on your credit card. So if you've got a $3,000 balance and let's say your monthly payment is 30 bucks, all we're gonna factor in is the $30. Let's call this client Stan. Stan's looking to buy this house on North Lenox. We're estimating his 20% down payment, his total monthly payment is 1464. Now let's break down some of his obligations that he might have on his credit report. Most people have a car payment. Let's say that is 400 a month for Stan. Let's say his credit cards total $250 a month. And let's say he's also got a installment loan that he took out that he's still making payments on for another one, 50 a month. Now, what we're gonna look at is adding up all the debt that showed up on the credit report plus his mortgage payment. Now, if we look at this, our total number is gonna be 2264. Now, when we're calculating and figuring out how does a client qualify for the mortgage, we're gonna look at a front end ratio and then we're gonna look at the back end ratio. They both matter when we look at qualifying someone. The front end ratio is simply just going to be the housing payment. So let's put front end and back end. Now the front end is your housing payment divided by your income and the back end is housing plus your credit report debt divided by your income. So when we look at qualifying someone, those are the two big ratios that we're gonna be looking at. Now let's just say in our case, Stan makes about $5,000 a month, okay? So now we're gonna take the housing payment, which was 1464, divide that by 5,000. It gives us about 29%. So that's actually a really good ratio to look at on the front end. So this is our front. Now let's look at the back. So now we're gonna take the 2264 because we're including the mortgage payment plus all the debt on the credit report, 2264. And we're gonna divide that by his 5,000, which is his gross monthly income. Remember when you are factoring in and trying to run these numbers at home, we are gonna look at your gross income. So that's before your taxes come out. We're looking at 45%. So when we look at qualifying Stan, we are gonna be looking at a 29 over 45% ratio, which is excellent. He shouldn't have any issues qualifying for the mortgage, assuming he's got the money in order to put down and his closing costs to purchase his home. So if you are a Stan out there and this looks like your scenario, congratulations, you've done everything possible in the right way to be able to qualify and purchase this home. Now remember, everyone that qualifies for a mortgage is going to have different ratios, different credit scores, and different abilities to be able to purchase. So just because this scenario might look like yours, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that you would be able to purchase a home, the best thing that you can do is always make sure that you get with the lender, have the lender run the numbers. That's one thing I cannot stress enough because only a lender can qualify you properly and let you know that you can purchase that home. These are some rough numbers that you can do at home. If you are thinking about buying or refinancing anywhere in the country and you want us to run a specific scenario for you, make sure to send me an email. I'd be happy to put an analysis together for you and help you along with your home buying journey. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.